In the context of American history, the Chesapeake Bay may well have been the birthplace. The peninsula provided resources and advantages for the surrounding estuary, including the state of Maryland, as it was a crucial economic asset. However, as the country industrialized and entered the 20th century, the geographic inconvenience that was the Chesapeake Bay became more apparent. People needed to travel across the state without navigating around the peninsula. The Bay had created two entirely different entities in terms of geography, culture, and class, the eastern and western shores. While different in many ways, one turning point in Maryland history would unite the two, the Chesapeake Bay Bridge. The first real proposal for a bridge across the Chesapeake was on September 3, 1907. Peter C. Campbell, a businessman from Baltimore, wanted a railroad across the bay with the intention to sway commerce and business away from Pennsylvania. The eastern shore of Maryland, historically, through the 1700s and through the 1800s and the first half of the 20th century, the eastern shore of Maryland was more connected to Philadelphia than it was to Baltimore. And so there was always an exchange of people going back and forth between Salisbury and Philadelphia and Wilmington and, and so on. The biggest place that our agricultural crops would go was straight up the peninsula, straight to Philadelphia. We had more agricultural crops that would go up north that way on the trains than would go by boat to, to Baltimore, although some did go there. Campbell proposed the idea to the Merchants and Travelers Association. His proposal was deemed feasible but the location of the bridge was the debated issue. Due to the demand, the Maryland General Assembly was forced to pass an act in 1916, authorizing the establishment of a ferry service between Annapolis and Claiborne. The Claiborne Annapolis Ferry Company was organized in 1919, backed by the current governor. This ferry system was able to transport people and automobiles across the bay in just one hour and 20 minutes. The ferry company had a monopoly on the transportation business as they are the only ferry partially funded by the state. For the next 40 years, proposals offered different locations of the bridge. Most of them were in the north near Baltimore, connecting Miller Island and Tolchester. A plan to construct a bridge from Baltimore to Kent Island was signed after a prolonged debate on May 17, 1935. However, just like all previous proposals, local authorities balked at funding the project. Luckily, the legislature of Maryland authorized the building of four new bridges. The State Roads Commission is given the job of where to put them. Even though the Chesapeake location was determined in 1938, it would take post-World War II America to pose the transportation problem once again, when mobilization took place. William Preston Lane Jr. became the 52nd Governor of Maryland on January 3, 1947. His campaign promises were to create a highway system across all of Maryland, including a Bay Bridge. Along with this, Lane also proposed a sales tax increased income tax, and a record-breaking two-year budget. Many people opposed these changes, but they would prove essential to the funding of the largest state project yet. The Chesapeake Bay Bridge would cost $45 million. Those that favored a bridge included the various business interests in Baltimore, as well as the developers of Ocean City. These groups sensed opportunity in having easy access to the eastern shore. On the other side, the Claiborne Annapolis Ferry Company sought to protect its monopoly. Others did not want funding for different public service projects to be taken for the bridge. Many saw no benefit in bridging the two shores. So one group of people were people who lived on the eastern shore and they were fearful of change and they feared that this was going to disrupt their um, traditional ways of living, it would disrupt their communities and it would bring in outsiders. And so that kind of fear of change on the part of the eastern shore community it was real. A second group of people who opposed the, the building of the Bay Bridge would be people on the western shore who feared the loss of tourism on the western shore of the Chesapeake. People who could go to the western shore of the Chesapeake as their beach destination, they thought they might now be more likely to cross the Bay Bridge and go over to um, Ocean City. And that in fact happened. A third group of people who uh, didn't want to build the Bay Bridge were people who didn't want to spend government money because they thought any time the government spends money, that money has to come from somewhere, and that somewhere will ultimately be the citizens who have to pay for this through taxes or through bonds that they pay back over time. In general, residents on the eastern shore were afraid of change, not wanting outsiders. Many feared that the shore would lose its small, calm atmosphere. The unexpected influx of visitors would cause economic development that many felt would be unsuitable. 
they saw the existing ferry system suitable enough. Newspapers at the time expressed the opinions of both shores. At first, the anger came from Governor Lane's highway funding proposals. On February 19, 1947, he proposed a 2% increase in sales tax and an income tax that would bring an additional revenue of $6.8 million. The entire highway, though, was expected to cost more than $150 million. In March, Lane then proposed to sell bonds and raise state gasoline tax from one penny to five cents a gallon to finance the gargantuan budget. People organized on the eastern shore. In Salisbury, citizens bought advertisements for newspapers, radio stations, commentators, and even sent out letters outlining their distress. Even the General Assembly did not guarantee the success of the sales tax. The J.E. Grainer Company designed the bridge, while the Bethlehem Steel Company provided the materials. The Grainer Company was required to meet several specifications by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Staggering amounts of materials were also needed, including an estimated 50,000 tons of steel. Three different construction designs were included in the bridge. New ferry terminals were added on Sandy Point and Mattapeak Pier, very close locations to where the bridge would be today. In the next governor election, William Preston Lane Jr. would lose to his rival, Theodore McKeldin. The Bay Bridge was opened to traffic on July 30, 1952. A huge ceremony was prepared. Even though Lane was not governor at the time, Governor McKeldin invited him to cut the ribbons on the bridge. A motorcade had both the governors travel eastbound towards the shore. Free bus rides were given and the last ferry crossing occurred. The ceremony was documented on many newspapers from both sides of the shore and was noted to be a turning point in Maryland history. Areas across the shore were drastically changed to conform to the development of Route 50. The bridge was very typical of the uh, construction style and the kind of impulse of America in the 19, late 1940s and early 1950s. But with the whole impulse to make automotive transport easier, um, the United States as a, as a nation made the choice to move towards individual transportation rather than public, mass public transportation like trains. And we literally dismantled our kind of passenger rail system in favor of cars. We live now in a world where it's almost unimaginable to think of going backwards. Most people love their cars and they love their individual transportation. And that, for America, has been devastating. Uh, it's been devastating in terms of our um, urban landscapes where if you ever just take a look at how much of our landscape is covered by cement, it's astounding. And you start thinking of how many of our businesses are geared toward cars. The parking lots, the fast food restaurants so you don't have to even get out of your car to eat, banks with drive through tellers, um, you know, all of the car repair shops, all of the used car shops. And it's just it's interesting to think about what the world would look like if we were still more train-based than car-based, you know. Traffic increased as more cars went to fill the bridge route because of the increased access to attractions such as Ocean City on the eastern shore. According to the Maryland Transportation Authority, traffic volume for the Bay Bridge increased from 870,000 vehicles in 1952 to 25.7 million in 2015. In 1964, a study was conducted on where to put a second bridge. Once again, there was an extensive debate on the location. Even with the completion of the second bridge in 1973, a new proposal of a third span had always been kept in the minds of citizens ever since. The Bay Bridge is part of a larger project that connected all of America. Highway Route 50 was intended to connect the west with the east. Built at the height of American individualism, the automobile pushed for people to move around the country, and the Bay Bridge was certainly a sign for that change. Whatever the case may be, the Chesapeake Bay Bridge has left an enduring impact on the identity of the state of Maryland and is a symbol of unity in the face of differences, inevitably accompanied by sacrifices for all.